Hari Om everybody and uh, a very warm welcome for, for the last session of today. Um, I would like to begin with this small incident that has uh, made a great impact on me. And that was uh, when I was in third grade, uh, you know, now that we are doing today, grade three and four, it just got me reminded of this, that when I was in third grade, we too had this VE class and I had this tall, skinny, a uh, pretty elderly looking uh, teacher uh, probably didn't have much teeth also like not all I mean most of her teeth were fallen yet she used to come out of passion and she used to think just for education classes and in one of the days we had this maths teacher coming to her and saying ma'am can I borrow your period please we have some portions to get it done and we all were so taken aback we all were so shocked looking at the way my math education teacher spoke to my maths teacher and that the way the conversation happened and after that teacher left but uh, you know she agreed that she's not going to be giving her the period and uh, probably the education teacher Bhagya Lakshmi ma'am um, remember I sensed that you know we all were quite shocked as to why did she have to scold her so I mean you know so so strictly or or so stubborn she was in not giving her the education period I mean it's just a education class big deal so uh, and uh, at that time without really uh, we also were quiet and even the teacher was quiet she just looked at us and she said children please remember there's a saying that when wealth is lost nothing is lost when health is lost something is lost but when a character is lost everything is lost and this character is built through the values. And this specifically happens through our value education classes. So the way she said this and the way she made us understand without really complicating it or, you know, making it so obvious. Yet this one saying or this one thought has just fed in my brain and heart so deeply that it was since then that I started respecting the values that I was taught. And today, we're all here being instrumental in passing on that ancient wisdom to our kids and to our next generation. And doing this fabulous job does require us a little bit of self-appreciation, right? And for this, I would just request all of you, as yesterday that we had done, just please raise your hand. Please raise your hand. Uh, I think someone is uh, having an issue with my voice not being audible. Uh, I would request you to please check it at your end because I guess I am pretty much louder. Can you please be a little louder? Okay, I will try doing that. Thank you, Janani Ma. Thank you. Yeah. So I was saying that just raise your hand and pat yourself at the back. A little bit of an appreciation. Yeah. For doing this wonderful job and for volunteering for this uh, noble thing. Okay. So today we're going to be seeing grade three and grade four of intellectual development. And uh, please allow me to share my screen. <clears throat> okay. Right. So we're going to be seeing under the subdomain of management uh, the tiger or fox and just to reiterate of what Swamiji, Swami Anuklananji was mentioning this morning that subdomain has got its own importance because it helps us to channelize that lesson in that particular direction. So just to reiterate, please do focus on the subdomain which is given at, at the index and uh, you know it'll, it'll just ease our uh, uh, ease our way of taking the class. Yeah, so the sub, under the subdomain of management, we have um, tiger or fox story and uh, the class arrangement that requires is just simple, just so that everybody has a VE book uh, before they end, before they come for this class. Now, I would just like to ask you a few questions so that you all could think for yourself as to what are the things that you do by yourself, right? Since morning until you go to bed, uh, you can put it in the chat box if you wish. It would be nice to uh, know these things as to what are the things that you do by yourself. You know, from brushing to wearing the clothes for yourself to making your own food, etc., etc. Right, and then we go on to saying that what are the things uh, others help you to do it? 
Okay, so for children, it would be probably we are dropping them to school. They uh, somebody else washes their clothes, somebody else cooks food for them, etc. Right. What are the things we ask help from others out of our laziness? Right. And this, I think, most of the kids do this, saying, "Amma, please give me a glass of water." Right. Although they will be the ones sitting or uh, standing next to the kitchen, and probably Amma would be in the uh, you know balcony, but still they would ask all the way, shout out, saying, "Please give me a glass of water." Right. Uh, or also sometimes keeping the plate in the kitchen after eating, we or the kids have this tendency of just leaving the plate on the dining table and they would move out or they would run because their friends friends are calling them. So uh, such a little bit of things as well we need to sort of uh, I would have probably started the class with. And then after having these basic questions or these generic questions, I would go on to saying that uh, has anyone been to Rantambo National Park and where is it? And this I'm asking you people as well as to where is where is Rantambo National Park? I am waiting for you people in the chat box. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry again. I don't know the name, but it says System PC. All right. Thank you so much uh, for answering that. It is in Rajasthan. Okay. And now let us listen to the story of Manav, who uh, went on to uh, went on to this uh, national park for his visit, and he noticed something quite peculiar. So let's see what that was. Okay, so he saw he went to this national park and he saw that tiger with a lots and lots of effort is killing its prey and he eats it and whatever is the leftover he he I mean whatever you know how much of a once his stomach is full he leaves okay and there comes this fox who uh, sees this remains of the prey remains of the dead animal and he eats his bit without really doing any effort and he's also his hunger is also satiated and he leaves. So this happens for days, and uh, our our hero is watching all of this, and he says, "Hey, this tiger is putting in so much of effort, and this fox is getting to it without any effort, and that's so cool because God is being uh, so kind to fox, giving him, uh, you know, something without much effort. So why not let me also try this?" And that's what he does. He goes back to his home, and uh, he waits for the god to send him some food and send him some money. Right, he waits and waits and waits, but nothing happens. So he becomes really sad. And then when he tells God that God, he asks God as to why are you doing this to me? You gave Fox without any effort, but you're not giving me the food, and I'm getting really hungry. I'm getting really weak. And that's where God says that I have made you in such a way that you are capable of doing things for yourself. So understanding that, he goes on to his work the next rock since the next day. Right. So that's all the story all about, and it tells us about that the hard work does pay, and being lazy is no good. So now uh, let's let's try and understand this a little deeper, wherein we list down certain things that we can do it on my on my own, and the things that we need help for others to do it, and those things that we can try doing it by ourselves, right? So, um, uh, so this is what we would we would have to spend a little more time in sort of helping the child as to it's not about uh, being it's not about not taking help from elders, but it's just about see if we can do certain things by ourselves. For example, uh, you know, eating dinner, uh, eating dinner. If, if the child is asking an elder's help, he can always try eating by himself, right? Because he's anyway a third grader now, so he can definitely do that. Or even sometimes for wearing socks. Because many kids they they can tie their shoelaces, but they find it difficult to tie uh, to wear their socks. So that can be taken as I will try doing it myself, right? And then um, we have a couple of more questions that we can ask, for which there's a quite an elaborate thing given in our teacher's handbook as to you know wh what and why do they get scolding for, and why do they repeat sometimes even after being scolded and things like that? Because probably they're not really working hard on improvising themselves, correct? Uh, one of the homeworks that could be given for them is the story of self-reliance for self-development, wherein they come up with some story on uh, people who have been self-reliant and who uh, and it's become a pretty big brand now, or it's become quite a successful story. And we can also discuss about what's being local, uh, what's being vocal for local, and uh, uh, and how it would benefit our country. So that's nothing but be Indian by Indian. Uh, 
again coming to uh, the character building which habits play a very crucial role about and that is that i get ready by myself i pack my own lunch box i wash the dishes after food i uh, fill my own water bottle before coming to college uh, i mean school uh, and so some of the things that you could do as well is to keep your folded clothes in the cupboard and not just let it be there until your mom has to pick it up and put it in the cupboard right? so you can just do that bit and also you can try to arrange them neatly maybe for now it can start with just putting the clothes in the cupboard and then slowly after a week or two once you're comfortable doing that you start arranging the clo uh, clothes neatly in the cupboard pack your own bag for school and fill your water bottle throw waste from the plate in, into the dustbin and try polishing your shoes by yourself <clears throat> And then comes our checklist as to if we are able to, able to tell them that hard work does pay and it always does. Um, make them feel about how they can actually enjoy the hard work and do is to avoid laziness and develop the habit of working hard or rather do the work independently. The main messages that needs to be conveyed is that we need to avoid laziness and work hard. Okay. Uh, some of the follow-up that we can do with our uh, children here is that let the people uh, let the children observe the people who are actually working hard they can probably have a scrapbook sort of thing wherein you know there's uh, the picture of carpenter mason the vegetable seller uh, the cobbler the the painter and such people who are actually working hard to earn their living uh, another thing that we can do is maybe once a week we can sort of have a check on the children, asking them if they are, you know, doing any new tasks that they have started doing it by themselves. Let's say that so far I was not polishing my shoes. My father was doing it. But this week onwards, I have started polishing my own shoes. Uh, if they have started spending some more time at studies, at practicing some arts, music, sports, etc., because that needs a little extra effort. Right. So have they been able to uh, spend time doing all of these activities? And if they are working at getting more uh, good or neat remarks in their notebook, which obviously means that they are trying to work hard and work, uh, they are trying to improvise upon themselves. The next we have is intellectual development. Yeah, okay, I can go ahead. Uh, is about uh, let's be gentle. Right. So that's again, uh, the, the subdomain is under aesthetics that let's be gentle comes in. Uh, it's the lesson 14. So uh, the classroom arrangement would be the coconut broomstick, uh, which is for the broomstick balance activity. And then we have needle and thread for about 10 to 12 kids for needle thread challenge. The active, so I, so what I would have, how I would have taken this class is that I would have started the class with this activity of the broomstick balance, saying that, okay, let's, children, let's come and play this activity. And uh, what the, how it works is that there would be these broomstick, uh, you know, given to them. There would, there would be three kids, you call out the three of them. And at the tip of their finger, they will have to hold it. And that stick would be a little above the head level. Okay. So the three of them are standing and they have it uh, in this position after which they have to uh, keep it into the flow level, okay? And pretty simple, but the trick here is that they cannot lose the touch of the stick. At no point can they leave the stick or lose the balance or, you know, uh, uh, leave the stick out of their hands or out of their hand control, okay? And of course that you can make the entire class watch, watch over them or maybe have one or two extra volunteers looking at them and stuff, uh, however you want to make it fun. Uh, and, and the whole idea is that, okay? So, so they do this, very good, fine. And and probably you can just go on to say that, you know, doing things faster is easier, but doing things slowly or steadily, it gets a little difficult because it needed your attention. It needed the control over yourself. Yeah. And then also comes this, the needle thread challenge, wherein um, we have the needle, uh, you have a couple of, uh, let's say five to eight children. Uh, both the mixture of boys and girls could be the part of that circle. Um, and uh, on the uh, you have your uh, on the left hand side you have the needle. On the right hand side you have the thread. And standing in the circle, they try putting the thread to the needle of the person standing next to them. Okay, so person standing next to them, and they have to do it. The challenge here is that they have to do it at one go. So the moment you give them the signal, they have to start doing that, and it has to go in at at one at once. Okay. So here again, it is to say that uh, alone things are easy, but the things which needs teamwork, the things which needs coordination is a bit challenging. 
Uh, we can also discuss upon that everything that sustains life is powerful yet very gentle. Example, the wind we have, the sun, the sea, and so on. So uh, we can also have discussions on situations when we need to consciously be a little gentle, right? So um, uh, we have uh, our elders in the family who, uh, I mean, our grandpas and grandmas who might have some hearing issue or who might have some visionary uh, vision issue. So for them, uh, sight issue rather. So for them, they can be a little gentle in sort of explaining or re-explaining them uh, a little more politely and a little more gently. Uh, talking to uh, toddlers behaving uh, with babies, they can be a little gentle with small pets, they can be a little gentle, right? And just one a little note to the teachers here for the needle thread challenge is that the children need to be careful with the needle. A special instruction needs to be given so that they don't end up poking each other or, you know, hitting, hurting each other. Okay, so here is where we have an amazingly beautiful story for which I would like to play the animation. <clears throat> One second, I'm sorry. Let's be gentle. Summer vacation was around the corner and Swar, Ajuni and Sharik were very keen on learning martial arts. They had heard a lot about a martial arts teacher who lived in their neighborhood. When they approached him, he gave them a task. Before he could say anything further, the children began trying to impress him with their physical capabilities. Swar believed he could lift heavy objects. Ajuni was confident about her powerful shoulders and Sharik his flexibility. The master listened to each child patiently and gave his reply. He wanted them to go out and observe everything around them for three days. They should come back and share whatever they witnessed. The children were confused as to how this would help them become stronger. Yet, in obedience to their master, they observed and reported to him after three days. Swar saw a flower bud withstand heavy rains and winds. Ajuni saw huge elephants bring down a giant tree using their trunk. Sharik saw dolphins swiftly dive in the ocean. After hearing them, the master asked them to go back home and think some more. He asked them to come back the next day and tell him what more they had observed. Swar saw a strong bud blooming into a beautiful flower. Ajuni commented that the elephants used their trunks gently to pick up blades of grass. Sharik was amazed by the dolphins who swam gracefully without hurting each other. When Master asked the children what they had learned from these observations, Swar, Ajuni and Sharik realized that they needed to learn how to be gentle in order to be strong. Being gentle was not weakness but strength. They also understood the fact that gentleness adds value to one's character. Yeah, so we saw how gentleness adds value to our character and how gentleness is the attribute of the strong. So um, and they could also be this, so one would be the animation that we could show. And another one is, of course, to tell the story, right? So, and it tells us that how to be gentle and uh, we will know how to be strong, correct? So this is just a small note here where wherein children are actually saying that, you know, they want to be like Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan and all of that. In case they, in case the children end up having a doubt saying that, you know, but they are strong. So do, are they, are you saying that they are not gentle? 
in case just in case a question or a doubt such such comes up in the class it's just about you know you are you are being strong fighters because they are gentle right it's just that that gentleness is not it's not very obvious just like the flower or the elephant that you saw the examples of okay so uh, and now it's time to play it again right because now that we've understood how to uh, sort of develop it or what exactly is the key of being strong of being uh, successful so that's where we can play the game again of the broomstick balance as well as the needle thread challenge um and some of the habits that we could develop would be uh that the things that i do is that i'm careful when i talk and play with the toddlers i shake my hands very gently with the person giving me a handshake uh when a student does not understand what i say in spite of repeating the instructions i go close to her and re-explain of course if the student is generally not able to understand right so uh then we uh move on to the act i mean the activities again wherein we write down the names of the various living creatures whom we need to be gentle with right so uh why is this okay sorry yeah uh, so uh, you know the things like uh, being uh, especially the, with the animals on the road or even with uh, some of the insects that by mistake has have, have come up to our house we end up seeing that the kids go haywire it can be uh, you know dealt with much more gently actually um and gentle with the nature etc so with that we have some of the habits that we can develop also uh, for the kids that they can do is that listen to their grandparents when they have troubles listening uh, or seeing um if you see your friends uh, the the uniform of theirs is torn or dirty bring it to their notice uh, by speaking to them politely and uh, you know even some of the uh, physical attributes that you can have for this is that you can st start practicing uh, standing in a tree pose or squat for 20 to 30 seconds or you know so to say so that it increases your focus in being stable it it brings some sort of uh, shanti you know at the core so that you uh, one can tend to become more polite and more soft or gentle with people and things um our checklist comes in here where we see that gentleness is not a weakness but a strength and we are able to instill the feeling of that gentleness does add value to one's character and uh, what do we do about it we replace the harsh habits with gentleness yeah so the main message is conveyed that it is the attribute of the strong uh the assessment that we can do is that students write how the strongest of beings around are uh, also very gentle at the same time okay uh this can be taken as an individual activity or as an activity of a pair um and some of the examples that could be is uh, you know lion attacking his prey versus him loving his his cub right or a tree so strong bears the tiniest of bud with so much care that it blossoms uh, to be the flowers and fruits so uh, that's one of the assessment that we can do another is that um, students can observe people around in their family who are gentle yet firm right so it can again be a grandpa or grandma who speak very softly but they have something very powerful to convey uh, one of the leaders that comes to my mind right now is uh, kalam sir uh, you know if you've heard him speak or you know he's very gentle i mean his voice is very uh, polite and with everybody and yet when he uh, gives a remark is is truly very powerful right it's it's very uh, transform transforming with with what he what he says so um yeah so with this we conclude our class 3 <clears throat> okay give me a minute please uh if anybody has any doubts with regards to class 3 feel free to put it in the chat box once we are done with class 4 we will come back to this uh just give me a moment people very sorry for the delay there's something
Yes, somebody. Yes, somebody. Let's see the presentation. Uh, somebody, one second. Like again, you need to close it and back. Somebody, now is it, is it seen? No. 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 Can you close the presentation? Yeah, now it is fine. It came and went away just now. Okay, 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 yeah, yeah. there it is. Yeah. Okay. Apologies once again for the inconvenience. Okay, so now we have class four. Uh, so uh, class four, the subdomain again, very important, is about kindling the intellect. So under that, we see uh, observation is power, right? So uh, that's where the class arrangement should be that everybody has their VE book. Everybody has their VE. Uh, if anybody is unmuted, I request you to please mute yourself. Okay, uh, ensure that everybody has the VE book, ensure that the rows in the class have equal number of uh, kids because we're gonna be playing some good quiz there. And also, if possible, the teachers can get some 10, 15 objects from home or class. This observation activity is something that has been added here. It's not there in the THP as yet, but uh, this is something just an addition if the teachers are feeling comfortable doing this. Uh, okay, so my uh, questions to you people would be, have you seen a bird? A yes or no in the chat box? A yes or no in the chat box? Quick, 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 quick. A yes or no in the chat box? Have you seen a bird? Very simple question. Yes, wonderful. Okay, brilliant. Um, okay, going on to, have you, have you ever seen a flower? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Okay. The sky. S, 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 S. The person is so quickly typing. <laughs> okay, it's all S's. All right. Uh, have you seen the rain, the, a butterfly, an ant? Yeah. Good. Great job. Okay. So oh, you all have seen all of this. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay. But... Have we observed a bud blooming into a flower? Yeah, yes, no. Okay, Mix, mixture of answers, okay. A plant coming out of seed? Yes, no. The sky at night? The sky at night? The clouds before the rains? The color, the pattern, a butterfly sucking honey from a flower. Yes, no, okay, okay. Ants moving into a straight line. <clears throat> yes, no, okay, right, wonderful. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, Swamiji, I just hope it's recording because I think by mistake I pressed stop recording, I guess. I'm not sure. Uh, Swamiji? It's fine, Ma. Thank it's you. fine? Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So, uh, okay. Again, a question as to how many squares can we observe in this picture? How many squares can we observe in this picture? 14. Okay. Amita ji says 14 and your answer is absolutely right. Okay. Some of you say 10, 9. Okay. The right answer is 14. Yes. Uh, again, very simple. Of course, we have these nine squares here and then we have one. This one big uh, big square is one. Uh, so that will be the 10th ten, um, ten one, 11th one, 12th one, 13th one and 14th one. Okay. So uh, moving ahead. Many a times, uh, see here in this class itself, some of us got it right, some of us, for me a simple reason that sometimes, or rather many a times, we see things, but we do not observe them. Okay, we see it, but we do not observe. All of us saw the same square, right? Yet, some of us got it right, some of us got it wrong. Okay, and so then what is observation, or rather how is seeing different from observing? 
and i would say just like how it's different from hearing to listening right hearing is like yeah some sounds are coming but listening is when is where when we are totally attentive similarly observation and seeing the difference is that observation is the skill of noticing any person or situation closely all right moving ahead we have the amazing story here of uh, agassi versus becker um agassi was uh, you know agassi has has lost a couple of matches uh, with from from becker and that's where he realized that something needs to be done uh, i need to change my game or some style or or something but before i change like why not let me observe about his game so he uh, you know see some of his videos of of how uh, becker plays and uh, he gets to know and he observes something that whenever he's about to serve, he tends to uh, stick out his tongue and the direction in which he sticks out his tongue that, that's where the ball goes right so let's say he sticks it out to his center then that means the ball is expected to uh, uh, hit either the person i mean you know either at the face or at the person okay it's the center center of the court so like of left right likewise right and when he understood that is where um, okay when he uh, observes that he ends up uh, winning against him and that's where this alertness and deep observation is what is should be the narrative of the story and observation skill is definitely a key to success so um, that's where we would play an activity wherein uh, you know we would test the students or rather just ask them about some of the places and things that they have been uh, you know in school uh, to see their observation skill okay so some of the things could be the date of inauguration if it is placed in the uh, in the school uh, or in the number of places that they that have steps going to the first floor of the school uh, quotes which are displayed in the school corridor uh, meaning of the school's logo or motto and all of those things could be asked provided it's there and they probably pass it uh, you know every day to reach their classroom so anything of that sort which you find you can ask them just to see how many of them are being observant uh, and this is the game which i was talking about that we just added was about you know 10 to 12 objects that that can be kept on the table for about 20 30 seconds and it should be taken away from the vicinity and that's where the children are to write on what and all did they observe it what and all did they find on the table so it could be something like you know this can also just be altered in a way wherein uh, let's say that Uh, you know when the class when when it's your ve period the kids are just coming in from that pt class or you know something some other place and they're just coming and settling there so when they're coming uh, we can have some these kind of objects right at the entrance uh, at the table there and the kids are watching and everything once they are settled down you just simply put it back in the bag okay and that's where you ask that you know there were a couple of things which was kept in the entrance of the door at the entrance of the classroom so what about the, what were those things could you just list it down okay so that could again just be another way of doing it uh then we have our checklist which is to uh, ensure that we have inculcated the observation skills in them it's a necessity to feel the power of uh, observation appreciate it and also enjoy in working the observatory skill in the child um what can we do is to observe practice i mean practice being alert and practice keen observation right so uh, the main message would again be that observe your surrounding because it's worth it um and ha huh, this is one of the very beautiful incidences that i got to know just this morning uh you know uh, from our gurudev right so there was this play called kamba ramayana uh, that we the youngsters had done uh, and when was the first show back then uh, there was this final rehearsal happening just before the before our show so gurudev puja gurudev had come to witness the rehearsal and uh, uh, there was the scene going on where uh, ravana is worshiping shiva uh, he is going to the temple to worship shiva uh, just before the final war uh, between him and uh, rama lord rama so uh, he does that and you know and that's it so then the scene the next scene comes and then uh, gurudev gets up there and he says that ravana did not go to shiva's temple with his footwear on Okay, so the person who was playing the Ravana's character, he would have probably just worn the worn the footwear and then entered the temple. But just see the uh, you know this, the observation that Gurudev had that you know Ravana doesn't enter the temple with his footwear on. So uh, that's where uh, we learn from Gurudev and uh, the some of the habits which I would like to 
uh, which I would like to practice or which I am practicing is that um, when somebody speaks to me, I do listen to them carefully. Uh, I love playing Sudoku, wherein again, uh, my, uh, you know, it's, it's, I develop that habit and I follow instructions to the T given by my elders. And when I go to a new or unknown place, I look around if the people look safe and if the situation is a good conducive enough for me to be there. Uh, what if not if i find that the conducive it's not conducive enough i immediately call up my mom saying i you know i need i need you to be here or this is where i am and just keep a track of i send her my location or you know those kind of other alternative alternatives that can be practiced uh, some of the habits that we can develop uh, for the children would be that you can also play games like you know picture puzzles sudoku crossword uh, games like uh, chess uh, also boost our observation skill and in our travel let's observe the movement of clouds to know the weather conditions and how they how the pattern changes uh, while talking look at the person listening to you whether the person is smiling frowning or in a hurry so accordingly you can also basically the body language of the person is what we need to observe when we are communicating and that of course as teachers we do that every day uh, you know just before the class we understand that whether the child is you know whether children are not right now or they are attentive uh, so we're pretty good at that but yeah just for the child also to be observant here we say that when you speak to somebody have this habit of ensuring that that person is also keenly looking you know waiting to listen to you and not uh, you know not wasting your time so uh, once a while test yourself whether you know what all things are present on your study table or your table drawer the assessment could be uh, sort of, I mean, you know, you can actually play the Sudoku in class itself. Uh, the, the road that answers correctly could be given points as encouragement, and there could also be a pop quiz on things and people around them or in the school. So that the, the activity that we saw could be conducted as pop quiz as well, depending on uh, the class environment there. Um, yeah, so next is our last session. I mean, uh, last topic, which is time is wealth. Uh, I'm just going to quickly run through this. Okay. So time is wealth. Uh, it comes in the subdomain of management. Uh, class arrange. Okay. Uh, right. So our class arrangement would be wherein we have a jar, a few rocks, pebbles, some sand, and a jug of water. These are the couple of things which is a must for this class, uh, for this uh, session when we take. Um, and I would personally suggest that you know, the teacher should practice this activity uh, at home itself just to ensure that what other quantity that is required for this, you know, because everybody would differ in the jug of, uh, in the uh, the jar that they would have uh, or the rocks and the pebble sizes would differ. So it's always better that the teacher actually practices this at her end once and then takes it to the class. So, uh, and also uh, one caution is that the class make it a little dirty when you're doing this. So probably you can have it a newspaper under it or just keep uh, keep the cleaner informed that you know after 10 15 minutes please just come to this class so um uh, the narrative uh, would be that the moment you realize how important time is your entire perspective would change uh, so this is where the story of the two kids, story of Sham and uh, Shankrit, wherein one of the guys, uh, one of the children, uh, you know, they don't end up, they don't do the math homework and he's quite regularly, re he was quite regular and not doing the homework. So, uh, and the teacher here is, you know, very strict and, and moreover it's math. So the, when the teacher uh, comes in, she asks, the child has not done it as usual. So that's where this teacher, out of compassion, brings in these uh, materials in the class and she does this activity wherein she first puts puts in all the rocks, all the big stones, all the big rocks, she puts in first, asking if the jar is full. And the kids say, yes, it is. After that, she puts in the small pebbles and then she just shakes the jar a little bit so that it settles down. And then she asks if the jar is full. And the students say, yes. After that, she puts in some sand and she asks if the jar, if the jar is full. They, they all say, they, they still say yes. And then she puts in some water up to the brim and asks if the jar is completely full now. And they say, yes. Right. So the, the jar is completely full with all of these things. Right. And that's where she goes on to explain that rock represents all the important things you need to do as studying, doing homework, reading good books, exercising daily, offering your daily prayers, uh, etc. And then we have these pebbles, which represents the uh, the things in life that matter, but they are not very critical. OK, so that could be things like, uh, you know, your hobbies, playing with friends, pets etc. And then we have uh, the other things such as social service, which will again uh, make us better humans at the end of the day, right? It's not about the duty, but it's more about being a good human. So those would be considered as um, 
the sand uh, and then um, and then we have uh, those uh, activities which are not important but we do it for our entertainment or rather for our leisure which is say watching tv uh, that could come as the water which which finally fills up all the space in the jar right so that's what is the lesson here and um, uh, if we actually have some good amount of time uh, this activity i would consider it as one of the most thing when we are dealing with time management and what i would say is that uh, suggest rather is that you know we can have two or three volunteers and just ask them to fill the jar with these materials which is on the table so let let one child do it uh, you know and he would probably put in sand first usually when you say that you know you want to fill the jar you, the I, the only instruction that you give them is fill the jar with these items which is there and none of it should remain outside all of it should be in the jar right so that's when when you say such kind of a thing the, the student by by default tends to put in the sand first or they'll end up putting water first and things like that right so they try but then the, again the rule is that you can have the uh, you know you can do this activity just once so again it's a big challenge on the child as well and they he really struggles doing it and he, but you, of course you just applaud and you let them let them be back in his place so you call in the second child and you do something of that sort if he gets it right good if not let it be and let's let's just uh, you know leave it at that and then you do this and show it to them that look this is how it is done and this is where when you do that jar completely gets full right so the whole idea about is that let's prioritize let's learn to prioritize our task and let's understand the importance of it. okay so uh, that's that's another way of dealing with this activity provided we have good enough time uh, another set of activities that we can do another set of activities that we can do is uh, categorize the daily activities into rock pebble sand and water that is we take in time here to actually contemplate upon in my uh, routine what are the things which is rock which are rocks to me what are the things which is pebble sand water to me right so those are the th kind of things that we can actually spend some good amount of time uh, discussing with with the class and uh, how how we spend time time wisely is also something that's given in your teacher's handbook uh, time is same for all we all have 24 hours right so there is no real distinction between me and somebody else or let, for example let's say virat kohli or anybody of that sort everybody here has 24 hours and it's all about what we do with this time that makes us a uh, a winner or you know a winner or not okay and then is we can also have one uh, code on importance of time by the students which which can be probably written very artistically in their notebook that can be one of the creative stuff that we can do with with uh, you know just to uh, sort of reiterate on the idea of importance of time um the habits that we can develop is what i do i ensure that i reach my college on time so i wake up early i finish all the required work so that i can actually get on time uh, I, I a lot screen time for my social media say not more than one hours uh one hour time that i spend on instagram and uh, facebook um uh, i make a to-do list and keep all the rocks on top of it right and the days i have too much work i wake up 30 minutes earlier to be more effective so um uh, so that's about the habits that i that i have developed and what are the things which you can do as kids wherever you go practice being fully ready 5 minutes before you have to leave yeah so let's say our 7:55 is the bell we should reach uh, reach school by 7:45 or 7:50 um play games which involves solving puzzles in a stipulated time again that sort of just trains our mind to be uh, you know time bound or rather uh, to stick to the time um, which is given to us then keep an alarm to remind you 15 minutes before that you have to leave uh, this is something which i used to practice uh, when i wanted to be punctual um, and uh, whatever materials that is let's say school bag uniform socks shoes we require it can be kept ready the night before uh, the next day and uh, we lose it a lot of time in searching so uh, if we keep things in order we do not we don't we do not waste our time searching for it right and as puji gurudev says plan out your work and then work out your plan <clears throat> our checklist here uh, the where the head heart and hand work together so we have uh, to know importance of time management learn the techniques to manage time uh, feel uh, you know how precious time is a big loss if it's wasted um, something very important a very good nice equation is that the more time we have the greater preparation we do and because we do uh, we, because we are more prepared we have greater opportunities open for us and therefore we have greater chance of success so more time is equal to greater preparation greater opportunity greater chance of success and uh, for that what we have to do is manage time very well uh, the main message is time is wealth 
assessment could be uh, report to your teacher if you've been punctual uh, your punctual or manage your time well on waking up without pressing the snooze button and a couple of other things are mentioned in here um and yeah so with this we conclude uh, class 4 thank you hari om it was uh,